Welcome to the Better Together podcast, where we look at ways that we can come together to help each other in our ministry. Today we have with us uh, Alan Pointer. So Alan Pointer has been a youth pastor. He's been the director of the Truth and Peace Leadership Conference for several decades, really. Yeah. And currently he's the pastor, the lead pastor of Cofirst Chapel Church in Nashville, Tennessee. And so, Alan, uh, it's so great to get to talk to you today. And uh, we could talk about truth and peace. We could talk about youth ministry. But uh, we wanted to talk to you today about your church and the ministry that you have to Hispanic and Latinos. Yeah. It's a little bit unique, isn't uh, absolutely. it? Absolutely. <laughs> Tell us about that because we think about um, our population is shifting. As you think about Acts 1 8 going to all the world, well, the world's coming to us. And so, so we need to take advantage and take the gospel to the people in our community, and it looks like you guys are doing that. Well, well, we're trying. Uh, I don't know the full success rate, but one of the things that happened when I got to Kofors is I looked at who was in our church, and I realized that in our church at, the, at that time we were you know, someplace in 100, 120, someplace in that area. Uh, 10% of my church spoke Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, they were missionaries, either that have come back to, uh, from the field or doing other jobs um, or uh, retired. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't even pray about it. I just said, Lord, I think we probably should do a Spanish ministry. 10% of our people can speak Spanish. And uh, through one of our deacons, uh, Steve and Judy Lido were just coming home off the field yes. from Panama. And pretty much within a week after they voted me in as... Um, uh, lead pastor mm -hmm. of the church, they said, go see if Steve wants to come on staff. And mm -hmm. so I actually met them. They were on a trip, and we met in uh, Missouri uh, at a McDonald's. Uh, they were going one way, I was going another. And I said, we want to hire you as senior pastor and Spanish pastor. And that's kind of where it all started. Wow. And so Steve had worked in, uh, well, he's done work in Panama. He worked with the Bible Institute right. there. So he, I guess he provided translation of the services and so forth. Yeah. So our our idea, and Steve had the same idea that I did. When, when we were in Russellville at Connect Church, which mm -hmm. is First Church, we for a long time have had a Spanish congregation that was meeting at the church. Mm -hmm. But there was not really any interplay. And so one of the things we realized, well, we realized two things. One was that the leadership of the Spanish congregation was very important mm -hmm. and that we wanted to integrate them into the life of the church immediately rather than have them operate as their own church outside. Because we had read studies, again, while I was in Arkansas, to where if a a Spanish congregation is going to continue, then it has to make it through the first generation into the second generation. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted, as we were designing this at Cofers, and it wasn't really designed, it was just, these are my ideas. And Steve was like, those are my ideas too. The idea from the beginning was not to have a separate congregation, mm -hmm. but to incorporate them into the life of the service. And then through God's timetable, we ended up, and there have been points when we've had um, 25 to 30 Spanish speakers in our congregation. So Steve does the translation. We try to have every Sunday the songs in both English and Spanish on the screen. Mm -hmm. This past Sunday, we actually had a full Spanish praise team, and they sang in, in Spanish while our director, um, Mike Hollis, uh, led from the piano in English. So we, we try to do that from time to time. We try to do side by side some days mm -hmm. uh, so that it's not always translated. Yes. And then there have been a couple of times we've done the full service in Spanish uh -huh. and then translated back to English. And the idea is that we want the... the the Hispanics that are in our church to call Kofers home, mm -hmm. not to be meeting at another place that, uh, you know, just uses Kofers as a building. That was our viewpoint. It's mm -hmm. not the only way of doing it, right. but it's how we wanted to try to do it. And it is one way. And I was able to uh, attend your church once where you had um, lunch afterwards. Right. And it's pretty cool because you had, well, what we would think of as usual American dishes and some that, uh, you know, like Mexican, real Mexican food and so forth. It was uh, pretty cool, but it was a mixture of the cultures in one particular sitting. Yeah, the mixture is interesting because I don't know any Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, maybe seven words, and mm -hmm. most of those have to do with the menu at Taco Bell. <laughs> You know, as far as that goes. But I remember walking uh, into, the, into the service and shaking hands and them saying, Pastor, Pastor. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I pastor a Spanish-speaking church. Mm -hmm. And 
And who would have thought that that was even possible? For, and, and it's unique. Again, 10% of my church, we have translators that were able to do it, and not everyone is going to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. But with such trust in our leadership, Steve mm-hmm. specifically, and with the idea that we're shooting for the second generation, right now it, it seems to be working okay. Right. So one thing you did say is it's not the model for everyone. No. But it is a model. Uh, so there are some churches that have a Spanish congregation meet in the same church. Um, there, I think the Ebenezer Church in Miami does something fairly similar to what you're doing. It's a little bit probably the reverse where it's Spanish, Spanish yeah, and then, and then the, the youth English. groups in English. Yes, yeah. So I, I, I do think that there are different ways of doing it in in, in that context. Mm-hmm. But to be able to share cross culturally is amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the fact that we were able to take up. Uh, money for Venezuela yes. for uh, children in Venezuela who are suffering because one of our couples that that's where they're from and and, and their hearts are broken over yes. what's going on in Venezuela. Yes, uh, families from El Salvador who mm. work multiple jobs in order to be able to be here. It changes your congregation. Plus, it changes what you do on stage mm-hmm. because you can't just assume that things are going to translate. Mm-hmm. Video clips don't translate. Um, baby dedications. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's a Hispanic baby, we do it in Spanish mm-hmm. until I get to pray the prayer. If it's a, uh, you know, if it's a gringo baby, I hate saying that, <laughs> but if it's a, a you know, a, an American baby, then we do it in English and they'll do the translation through mm-hmm. the headset. So you have to think through those things. Uh, responsive readings. How do you do responsive readings? Uh, so we do two of them a uh-huh. lot of times. Um, but this past Sunday, we did, since we were doing so much of the service in Spanish, we just did a scripture reading in English. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we'll just read the scripture in Spanish and expect uh, those who speak English to be able to follow along. Mm, that's great. So I just encourage all of our folks that are listening to think about their communities. Um, your church is not where it is by accident. No. And so to think about what the community looks like and what you might much you might be able to do, and especially folks who've had Spanish classes in the past, had uh, various opportunities, or not just Spanish, we could think about French and oh, sure. and even Portuguese in some settings, um, and how we might use that. I should say, as the National Association of Free Will Baptists, we're trying to expand this a bit. We've always had our worship services, or at least for the last several years, I should say, we've had them translated into Spanish. This year, we're also having seminars, a Spanish track of seminars, and the business, which I'm sure is really going to make everyone uh, that speaks Spanish excited, will be translated into Spanish. But uh, if you'll notice, some of the resources that are at nafwb.org are also in Spanish. The prayer journal that we put out, there's mm-hmm. an English and Spanish version. Um, the catechism, there's an English, Spanish, French, and Portuguese uh, part as well. And so... Uh, if a person can speak another language and adapt to another culture, oh, don't take that for granted and think about how the Lord uh, might want to use that. And when they come across your path, you never know how the Lord is going to use that. Mm-hmm. Uh, just if your church is open and yes. your church is willing to be a little uncomfortable, mm-hmm. uh, the blessing, like you said, the diversity just having tamales yes. show up at it's, uh, it's cool. at one of our dinners shows that you know Kofors isn't the same church as it was before uh, our Hispanic friends started coming. And it's kind of interesting if you think about a lot of things that are good for a person or also well are good spiritually also good for a person. Right. So like you know if you if you're doing things that'll reach the community, you'll often reach your own children and. Here's an example. If if you're interested in doing this kind of ministry, there is uh, all kinds of research on the health benefits of uh, acquiring a new language, being mm-hmm. able to adapt to another culture. So there's a lot of good reasons for folks to, to do this. Well, we really appreciate what you're doing there, Alan, and uh, and the folks at Kofers, uh, the Lytles. I know you've got the Callaway. So right. many people there. Um, and I know even Dr. Pickerelli's books in Spanish have been helpful. I've heard from many about that. So uh, we just say Godspeed, and may you continue to do well and prosper, and may God continue to be with you and bless you. Well, thank you so much.